Hey everyone, welcome to Adrian figuring out how to share his screen. That's like a standard uh, standard part of all rancher meetups, I think, right? Oh, 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 we figured it out. <laughs> all right, everybody. Hi, this is fine. Cause like for the first minute of every presentation, like I imagine that the door is open and everybody's like, charging in to get a seat in the front row and we're all up here on stage and I just like kind of talk about nothing while I watch the numbers climb up and sort of stabilize which is kind of like what they've done now so we're a minute in so let's get going welcome to today's well today's this month's online meetup uh my name is Adrian Goins I do not appear on that slide but I do appear on this slide right here I'm the director of community and evangelism here at Rancher Labs, and I am joined today by two of my esteemed colleagues, William Jimenez and Shang Yang. William, would you like to say a few words? Oh, sure. Hey, everyone. Um, this is William Jimenez. I'm product manager at Rancher for the uh, Harvester project, which we're going to talk about in a sec. So I probably shouldn't give any of that away. May have even have done that a little. No. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, that's about it for me. Hi, so uh, this is Shen Yang. I'm Senior Engineer Manager and Software Engineer in the Rancher Labs. I'm currently around Longhorn and the project we are going to see, which is the Harvester. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even do that intro. You're at the online meetup, which is about open source, hyper-converged infrastructure, using a new project from Rancher that we're all super excited about, which is Harvester. So if you came here thinking that you were joining a baking class or just another regular virtual conference, that's okay. Hang out anyway, because uh, this is gonna be cool. But first, we gotta do some basic housekeeping. This is a meetup, it's not a webinar. If you've ever been to a Rancher meetup, you know that we do things differently. We do live demos, we do lots of Q and A, we break things as you saw when the thing just started. And that's fine. This is our opportunity to show you new and exciting stuff that we're working on and to take questions from you that, uh, well, yeah, are about really anything. Speaking of questions, there is a questions panel in the little go to webinar widget thing. Um, when you think of a question, ask it there. The only thing that I ask is that you keep your questions on topic to the things that we're showing today. Um, but as long as it's about what we're showing today, ask away, ask as soon as you think about them. And then we'll pause a couple of times throughout the presentation to take questions. Um, otherwise, we'll answer them all at the end. And we will do our best to stay until all questions are answered. We're going to demo because, well, yeah, because we're going to demo. And hopefully, the the gods of demoing will smile upon us today and nothing will go wrong. But if it does, whatever, we'll figure it out. It just goes from demo to live debug, and that's also fun. I invite you to join the community. I am the Director of Community and Evangelism, and we have a fantastic community that's on Slack. If you're not already there, you can get an invite from slack.rancher.io. Just throw your email address in there, and Slack will email you an invite. You can come and join. There are tens of thousands of people registered. There are thousands of people online and all sorts of different channels. It's a great place to go to get support, answer questions, and learn about the cool stuff that we got going on at Rancher. And with that, because I am not the star of the show. I want to hand this off to who's starting today, William or, or Shank? Yeah, I think, I'm, one I'm, I think I'm going to start this one, actually. I'm going to hand this off to William, and he is going to take it away. All right. Well, thank you so much, Adrian, for the introduction. And um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's dive right in. So let me share my screen here, um, which we all know is the great feat of webinar software. The hardest part of a webinar, it's like, uh, can you see my screen? I don't know. Because <laughs> they lie to you. They're like, yeah, we're showing your screen. And people are like, mm -hmm. Do you see Adrian something? does the going to show my screen dance. Oh, victory. All right. All you, man. Take it away. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining. And it's really exciting to be able to be with you all today and talk about a technology uh, that we've been working on at Rancher for some time now. Um, but it's very new. This is very new stuff for us. and um, you know, just just kind of maybe from what you're used to, from what Rancher Labs has developed, uh, I think what you see, what you'll see here today might be a little surprising. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to uh, introduce to you today this technology. And I'll start out by pointing out something that we've observed at Rancher and, and at Rancher Labs. We've been in um, you know the cloud native community for many years now. And if any of you any of you have been a part of cloud native um, CNCF. Uh, the growing amount of technologies that are out there, 
um, around containers and, and cloud technologies and, and the like, you'll notice this is probably a true statement that the technology that's been produced by this community is very powerful. We've really produced as a community some pretty remarkable technologies functionally. So, you know, for instance, orchestration. We've developed some very good orchestration technologies in the CNCF. I think we can all think of one that starts with a K perhaps, right? So orchestration is a powerful technology that has really matured in the CNCF over the past few years. We've also developed a lot of software defined networks. This is a technology that has increasingly matured and has become very, uh, very useful for a distributed environment like uh, data centers and on-prem environments uh, being worked or being coupled with clouds all over the world or edge networks all over the world. Software-defined networking has made these different types of network infrastructures sent essentially uh, uh, the same for us to engineer and to think about in our applications. We've been able to, to unify the experience across these different infrastructure types, very powerful. Cloud native storage has also been um, a big development in CNCF and in the, the evolution towards this new era we're in. So these three things that I just mentioned, an orchestrator, software-defined networking, and storage, these three functions, what do all of these, what do all of these produce when put together? Well, for one, they produce Kubernetes. They produce a container orchestration solution. When we put all these together, we get a way to run containers, um, run our applications in containers in a scalable, um, uh, efficient, and powerful manner across any cloud, any type, of any type of infrastructure. That's the power of what we've developed in the CNCF as a community, which is really exciting. Now, when you take a step back though, does anyone notice, and I wish this could be more interactive where people could kind of just yell out from the audience, that's, I kind of miss those days of real presentations. Um, could anyone else notice another application that these technologies are useful for, right? Uh, these three technologies, we've got, again, an orchestrator, a software-defined network, software-defined storage. Anywhere else we could use these technologies? Well, at Rancher Labs, we like to ask questions like this. We have our existential crisis meeting every month where we ask, ask the big questions of what's coming next and, and how else can technologies be used? And um, uh, well, what we found is, Actually, this is the exact same ingredients for HCI. HCI. So what is HCI? Hyperconverged infrastructure, also known as virtualization in some ways. Uh, although HCI is really about virtualization with the entire stack, the storage, um, the networking, and the virtualization being brought together into a distributed fashion. So HCI. So, um, and now I'd like to introduce Harvester. So this is where Harvester comes in. So Harvester is very is is not this is not a uh, is not a rocket science type of innovation. It's literally taking the technologies that we just talked about, again, an orchestrator, software defined network, software defined storage. These technologies that are very well understood now, and we're combining them to apply to a new use case, and that is virtualization, HCI, and um, workloads other than containers, essentially. And so we're, we're just combining these really great technologies, Multis, Longhorn, Kubevert, KVM, Kubernetes, Linux, essentially, Linux really should go in here too. The Penguin is kind of being left out. I admit, although he's, he's here, he's got his little, he's juggling his little uh, virtualization spheres for whatever reason, so he's kind of here. And so these technologies together produce something that is really powerful. And, and again, the, 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 the remarkable thing for, for us is that we, um, these technologies are so well understood that you can develop something with a lot of predictability. You can develop something that is easy to understand. Uh, as engineers, that you know, as site reliability engineers or DevOps engineers, you're gonna be able to approach an HCI solution like this, knowing a lot more about how it works than let's say some commercial uh, closed ecosystem HCI solution, of which there are many. And again, this, this is not to say that there aren't solutions to solve HCI out there. There's very good ones. What we wanted to try to do, though, is say, is there another way to approach this problem that might be 
more useful for some people. And again, if you're in the cloud native space, you've got a lot of tools in your tool, tool belt already that would be useful towards HCI and would actually enable you to get up and running with HCI much faster. So what does Harvester do? Well, it's full VMware, sorry, so, sorry, full VM lifecycle management. And that's managed, um, and that's primarily built on this technology called KubeVert, which allows, uh, you know, create uh, and, and update and delete op operations on VMs, the full lifecycle management, does SSH key injection, kind of the, you know, the, the, uh, the requirement for any sort of virtualization system. If you remember back in the day with Amazon, back in the early 2000s, right, we had to be able to put an SSH key into our Linux box to be able to SSH into it. Cloud in it for orchestration, graphical console and serial port access, so you can get out of band connectivity uh, and management of your VMs. And then also storage. Longhorn is a storage technology that is um, in the CNCF that Rancher's been very involved in for many years now. And we decided to couple that with um, KubeVert to produce an integrated storage and virtualization experience. And then networking. Uh, the CNI happens to be a really, really good network uh, SDN system, and it's very well understood. And so we can use basically the technologies that Kubernetes and CNI have developed towards the virtual machine concern. And we're using in particular Multis, which is a technology I believe originally developed by Intel. Um, it's an open source, multi-honed networking te technology for CNI. And then we can also support VLAN networking. And then Harvester also has an integrated image management. So we actually don't take the image distribution for granted and we build that right into the system. And so what does the architecture look like? Well, Harvester's architecture is um, very similar to other distributed systems you might have seen. So you'll notice at the bottom here, we have the node that's kind of the uh, substrate that we always start with in cloud computing. We have a node, which is a server or a virtual server. Um, uh, in this case, it should be, in general, it's gonna be a, a physical server because we're virtualizing, although some virtualized, excuse me, some virtualized environments do, do, do allow you to pass through the virtualization extensions to run this. Um, so that's not, a, that's not always a requirement. Um, but the kind of, this, the typical use case would be some physical hardware as a node, and then we're gonna run an operating system. And we're actually using uh, a technology that was developed at Rancher for, operating systems called K3OS in this case. And K3OS now is booting the kernel on the node and then booting the KVM, libvert, uh, KVM and libvert libraries on the node to allow us then to start virtualizing. And then from there, we start running Longhorn and KubeVert, which are storage and orchestration. And then on top of that whole stack then, of course, are VMs. And those VMs then can be joined. I don't know if I have a pointer in this webinar or not. Um, I certainly couldn't use a laser pointer, that probably wouldn't show up. But um, at the top there, you can see there's uh, virtual LANs uh, that would be brokered or, or uh, connected to VMs at your choosing. Um, and you can have N number of those, of course, and then a management network. And that multi-home networking interface setup, again, is part of what the Multis technology provides. So that's the Harvester architecture. Um, Adrian, I don't know the, sorry, I'm not really, as familiar with the rules here, perhaps. Should I stop here and ask for questions? Is that a good idea? Or Oh, there's not rules? Come on, this is Rancher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, any logical place that you have where you can, you know, if you're demoing something and something's taking a while to load, you just want to ask if there's any questions, just feel free to stop and ask. And at the moment, there are no questions. The audience is just fully engrossed in your presentation. Okay, wow, so I'm either doing a good job or this is not interesting. All right, uh, I, can, I can work with that, I guess. So yeah, this There's is still the 90 people here. There's 90 people, so it's still interesting. You're good. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, and so yeah, this is the architecture, uh, and 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 I would definitely would love to dive into questions, and and maybe this is just a lot of information at this at this stage, but probably more exciting than any slide where that I can show you uh, is is what's going to happen next, and that's the demo. And so now you're going to get to see the real technology, which is probably what you came here to see. So. With that, let me introduce um, Sheng, uh, who will do the more fun part of this. And Sheng, if you're, I lost yeah. my mouse now. So All I right, can't... so let me change presentation to yeah, myself. If you, can, 
if you can remove me from the picture because my mouse is no longer working. Oh, there you go. Uh, I have a fix for that, William. I will send you okay. the fix on Slack. All right. So hi, everyone. So uh, that's start demo, which I think is all you're uh, here looking for. So currently, I'm running Harvester right now. And in fact, we just released Harvester 0.1, the first MVP and the public available release this morning, like, well, three hours before. And currently, this Harvester version is installed on the Bellmental. And using the ISO installation, I can explain more on that later. But now, here's what we got. So that's logging using the default username password. And then you will see the dashboard of Harvester. So this is probably different from what you saw before with what you ever seen the Kubernetes. In fact, we are hiding the details about the Kubernetes. You don't need to know about Kubernetes to use Harvester, and you don't need to know about Kubernetes to manage your own data center, like running on the Harvester. So on the dashboard, you see that currently we have two nodes running, and we already have four, four virtual machines here. And I think the network, we do have two networks. This should be, yeah, this is the 1.0.1. So there are some issues here. Okay. In fact, I have two networks. And let me switch back. Okay, now it shows the right result. And I have already imported two images and already uh, have the five volume on that. And the down here, we are, you can see our the overall CPU and memory and storage size across all cluster. And on the host, and you can see that we have two nodes, and the one is what we call the management node, and another one is called computing node. You can add in as many nodes as you want into Harvester, and Harvester will automatically convert some of them into the management node when it's needed, except for the first, very first node you add to the Harvester, you need to, like, that's going to be a management node. So for each one of them, you can click into them and see what's the real-time data and what operation system and those kind of detailed information you are running on and what VM instance is running on as well. So, oh, that first one doesn't have anyone. Okay, so on the virtual machine, you already see there are a bunch of running here, but I'm going to first demonstrate how you are normally going to use Harvester. I believe that is going to be very easy and that's using a case serial OS as an example. So hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah. So I'm going to download and in fact upload a case serial OS image into this cluster, like the harvester, and then an image. If you want to have an import any new image into this cluster, you click create and you put in URL there and click create. So now you, what you are seeing right now is Harvester is doing the job to pulling from that remote URL and then uploading to our building image, image repo, right? You can see the real-time progress here. So that's wait a while for that to be finished. And then we can uh, install K3OS or run it as a live, as a live uh, VM as, uh, as always you can do. So I saw there are some questions. All right, so you yeah, want me to ask I, you I, questions? I question. yeah. So we had a question from Jeff that says there are other VM management tools like vSphere, Proxmox, OpenStack, et cetera. Uh, what's the advantage of Harvester over using something like that? Yeah, so one thing about Harvester is, uh, in fact, uh, if you think about, uh, for example, VMware, of course, is going to, VMware and Nutanix are probably the two, like, uh, to vendors owns the largest marketing share in the HCI, right? But the problem with VMware Nutanix, they're proprietary, they're not open source. You have to pay a very large amount, like called so-called VMware tasks to get that up and running. Yeah, they are definitely much more mature, but the price you pay is going to be pretty high. And on the other side, we have uh, something uh, like OpenStack. Yes, OpenStack is considered mature, but also we consider OpenStack to be, in fact, very complex to operate. It's not easy to do. It's not an easy way to do. And OpenStack by itself is designed to be really, really flexible. There's so many parts moving there. And when you install OpenStack, you probably need to budget a week or two to get it installed correctly on your system. 
But from Harvester, we design from ground up to be just like one click installation, either like either you are installing with an ISO or you just want to try it and you can deploy it as an app. So that part is the one thing that we're really proud of. And that's uh, that's what we think is the advantage of Harvester. And another advantage of Harvester is just like we are using, like we are using Kubernetes underneath, but really the Kubernetes provides us a way to do the orchestration easily between the clusters. We don't need to like worry complicated orchestration mechanism down there, right? So, but the problem, the problem with Kubernetes and many other technologies the harvester using is there are still a very high entry barrier for you to configuration those correctly. Kubernetes is probably getting much easier with the help like for the project like K3S and RKE and others, and also of course Rancher. But still, if we uh, if we think about that, we do have we do have a very large amount of users want to run the VMs. They need to run the VMs on the bare metal on the and yeah, HCI or not, they need to have VM running and then have the cluster building up from them. So that is the one part we are trying to address using uh, Harvester because we are using those uh, well-established, commoditized, but at the same time cloud-native cutting-edge technologies. We do believe we have edge like uh, over those traditional uh, traditional solutions. And also, you, if you remember correctly, WinWare is trying to embrace the K K uh, Kubernetes in their control plane as well. So that's a lot of things. Uh, that's in fact already saying something about uh, you, should we use Kubernetes or should we take advantage of Kubernetes to go with the virtual machines? Well, I think that's a probably a pretty long answer. <laughs> yeah, yes, so but it was very thorough. It's very thorough. Um, do you want more questions, or do you want to go back to, to your demo? Uh, yeah, I think I can go back right now because we we're going to have some downtime and later. So the okay. virtual machines, let's go create, and we just have uh, case OS image imported, right? So I'm going to create case OS, and uh, now we also have a feature called VM template, and this can allow you to just, for example, this one is the ISO, right? We download it, and this template are going to allow it to automatically load the ISO in the CD room, and then install and provide another root disk for that. So I'm going to provide case 3 OS MD, and you can see that we have image and those uh, root disk has been prefilled. Of course, you can change the size or stuff. And the networking, we're going not going to do anything about that. Advanced settings, so you can set up your host name, your cloud config here, and should be pretty at home with the people like operation data data centers, but uh, we're going to like go with default on that and let's click create. So now this K3 OS VM is starting and what you're doing right now, well, yeah, you see that uh, we are starting creating the city room and the root disk and then this is basically that we are pulling the image from our internal image repo that's going to take a few seconds. And then we are using that repo in underneath. If you understand like how storage on the Kubernetes works, it's going to be like created as PVC and then started as a pod with the uh, with the uh, like using the Kubernetes and Kubernetes we are spinning out to virtual machines. Yes, that's going to take a moment because most of the time it's using right now. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's to copy the data, then the download the data and the copy the data into this virtual machine to use as a, the CD room at the moment. So this is the K3 OS instance has been started. I think, can I, okay, still haven't been running yet, probably with a few more seconds. Okay, attach While we're waiting for that, there was actually a question, yeah. there was a question about what you're using for the local image repo. Since you just mentioned that, I thought maybe you could yeah, answer that. Yeah, the right local now. image repo, yes. So we're using a menu and it's deployed in the high available, uh, available mode and the menu, so it scales with uh, when your uh, cluster grows. And also with your automatic balancing, when you have like more node add to the cluster, and then we are going to rebalance the menu part across different nodes. Great, thank you. All right, so now you can see that case 3 os is up and running and we have console. And this is the VNC to this case 3 os instance. It's up and yeah, I think I kind of, I need to really go the full screen out here. Okay. Yeah, 
So this is K3 OS and we log in with the default user. And in fact, remember this is loaded as an image, sorry, as an SO, right? So we can do K3 OS install here to install this to the root disk. So install to the disk and I want to install to the VBA and uh, no cloud config, no SSH password. Let me just set something here and no Wi-Fi. We have run it as a server and the token just continue. So now I'm basically using this ISO to install K3OS into our root disk. And uh, this is going to, I think this is going to be pretty quick. Like, uh, yeah, so any other questions I can answer during the time? Yes, there are lots of questions. Uh, a number of people are interested if uh, Harvester is available for ARM architecture, ARCH64. Um, not really, not not currently. Yeah, so. Not yet, okay. Not yet. Good yeah, answer. Because the facility uh, is Harvester. Well. Yeah, sorry. No, yeah, no, you're going to provide more information. Go for it. The, currently, the Harvester is the building on the, um, on the KVM and uh, I don't really, this is hardware visualization. As you can see right now, those uh, clusters we're running on the bare metal with uh, uh, capability like uh, Intel, like VMX or AMD, uh, SVX, SVM. Those capacity, uh, those uh, those are enabled for hardware visualization. So yeah, I think uh, ARM has a similar te te technology, but I'm not sure, uh, we haven't looked into that. So that's the major barrier. Right. So if we support it or not. Okay. So if they do support it, we'll try to get it on the roadmap. And if not, then it's just technologically impossible. Yes. Seems like a seems like an easy answer. Okay. Uh, somebody else asked, Jeff asked if Harvester exposes everything that we see in the GUI via an API. Sorry, what do you mean? Is so so like you know when you're using the rancher UI, it's actually talking to the rancher API oh, in the background. Okay. So is Harvester the same? That's... Is there an API so everything can be done programmatically? Uh, currently, we uh, our focus currently is on the GUI right now, but we do of course expose everything like underlay on the API. But then, well, you need to dive into the Kubernetes cluster support Harvester to get into that. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, sorry, one moment, let, let me let me wrap up this one. So as you can see right now, the K3OS has been up and running and installed on the root disk. So when the boots up, it's back to the like uh, the root disk and you can see, let me see, DF, yes. And if you take a look at the mount, yeah, VDA is, uh, VDA1 is on the slash, this is the new OS we just installed. All right, that's for this K3OS. So another thing I want to show is, uh, in fact, the Harvest also support uh, multiple networks. And with uh, the first version we have right now, 0.1, we have a, a VLAN support. So I already defined two VLANs at this, uh, in this cluster. Um, this, um, the VLAN, in fact, is uh, pretty common when you operate on the data centers. And you know that you need to trunk the VLAN over the switch and base some program, do some programming against it. To, to get it running, uh, but it's uh, probably a foreign idea for the user, like unfamiliar with Plan Native World. Uh, for now, we are uh, really, uh, what we, the, the network choice we have right now is we have a default network, goes through the Kubernetes overlay network, and I think we're currently using Fnano. And then the other networks, which is we, we wrote the CSI plugin for the VLAN, and those are using together by using the motors to enable the virtual machines to have multiple NICs. So now I can create another virtual machine on the VLAN 92. So I'm, now I'm going to choose a, a cloud image from Ubuntu and the disk network is fine. I'm going to add a new network, which is going to be network VLAN 92. And then in other advanced options, I'm going to paste some cloud config here. So one is to set the password. Another one is to set DHCP for both NICs. And then we don't need to enable USB tablet, which is mostly you the for the UI. So let's click create. 
So while the Ubuntu 2.92 uh, is creating, we can also take a look at what we have before and Ubuntu 91 and Ubuntu 91-2, which has two Ubuntu uh, instance running on the VLAN 91. So for those cloud image instance, if you just click on the VNC console, you will see, wow, it seems it's humming, right? But in fact, it's not. It just didn't output uh, the, Im like, uh, it don't have like, uh, proper image driver to output into the, uh, the VNC console. So we also provide, if you click on the down here, you can see the open on the serial console. And those connecting to, this, uh, to the serial console of this Ubuntu. So now let's check the IP ADDR. So you can see that we are, uh, have the IP and the 91 uh, subnet. I can go to another one. Yeah, so this is the this is the one with the IP of uh, uh, 172.16, uh, 1, uh, 91.9. I can ping 172.16.91.10, which is the IP of the left side. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they can communicate. But if I take another VM, which is, you can see, in fact, if you take a look at the network, you can see this one is on the VLAN 91. And this 92 is on the VLAN 92, right? So they don't supposed to talk to each other, so we can do the same thing here. Okay, so I can ping 192.16. 91.9, which is the previous uh, VM IP, they cannot, of course, they cannot communicate with each other, but I do able to pin the gateway to make sure this VLAN is currently working. And let's take a look at our like new VM we just created. So this 92.2 is up. And if you click console, of course, you're still going to see the seems humming image here. And so that's why we are going to the serial, serial console. All right, so previously we have set the password using password as uh, the cloud init. Okay, now it's up. All right, so this one is the 92.6. Let me see what's the previous one. This one is, uh, yeah, 92.5. Yeah, in fact, I need to do a little bit of trimming on the IP route here because there's, you can see those uh, those women have two NICs. One is on the 10, 10 dot something network, which is our management NIC, and uh, that's powered by the Kubernetes flannel. And the other one is VLAN. So I need to remove the default route to make sure that they don't come to the, um, they don't route the traffic through the management network. Now I can do ping 192.16.92. Sorry, what's that? Five? Yes, they talk to each other, but I cannot reach another VLAN. I think it's nine, right? Yes, this one's nine. I can also try 10. Yeah, so they are basically VLAN isolated as uh, just as what you expected in your data center environment. All right, so that's for the Ubuntu here. Others. All right, so also uh, one common question that we got is that does the Harvester supports Windows? So we have one Windows VM running right now and we can take a look. So this is the, well, okay, let me just full screen it. This is the Windows uh, 2012 and I can use this one. To logging. Yeah. So this is the one that's working right now. But frankly speaking, we still um, have a bunch of no issues with the Windows VMs, and we're trying to uh, we're trying to check what like troubleshooting them, and uh, for the next minor release. 
So, but as you can see, that Windows is running fine on this uh, Harvest setup as well. Okay, I'll probably just uh, cancel this one. Yeah. All right. So that's the, the UI part of demo. Any questions? I can take some questions now. <laughs> You ask if there's any questions as if you expect there to be none. There are lots of questions. Okay. So we'll start at the top. Um, <laughs> there are people who are absolutely going nuts over this. Uh, there are a couple of people who have asked if it's possible to, if you had like one Kubernetes cluster, could you allocate some nodes for Harvester and then other nodes for regular Kubernetes workloads? Or does this need to run in its own dedicated Kubernetes cluster? Yeah, so currently we are uh, running this in its own dedicated cluster because really our design model first is we run to this. This is the hyper-converged infrastructure. So you're supposed to just have uh, every node running on the harvester and then we control over it. But uh, yeah, so that is not uh, considered right now. But uh, yeah, we can look into that if there's uh, enough use case for that. Okay. Uh, Michael asked if uh, if it's possible to import VMs from other platforms like vCenter or Overt versus having to build VMs all new. Um, I'm reading the rest of the question here because it's a long question. Yeah, so that's basically the question. Is there any provision for importing existing virtual machines? Yeah, so I think uh, for the virtual machines, you can always do is you can create a new image of that and for the URL, I think we support VMDK files as well. So you can just get VMDK files okay. here and import and create from it. So if you're asking, is there any easier way on that? Well, I probably don't have an answer for that now. <laughs> we, 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 don't, we, we don't go for easy here. We, we just go for doable. All right, we got a question from Mason who wants to know if, uh, and, and actually there was somebody else who asked a similar question, but I've got Mason's up in front of me, about the hardware requirements to run Harvester. Will it work on like, Edge environments, he lists something with like 32 gigs of RAM and six cores, which is funny. I, I love these people with, with giant edge machines. Um, what's like the base host recommendation for running this? Yeah, so we do have a recommendation down here. Yeah, so the minimum we around have at least four cores, AGB, and also a plenty of a disk. And in fact, a very important part is you better have like 10 GB network. Yeah, because the because on underlying, we are having highly available storage provided by Lone 4, which is basically moving data around. If you only have like one GB Ethernet down there, the base is probably going to be like um, running out of bandwidth after three volume or three VMs. So that is why you at least need a 10 GB network there. So that's uh, that's what our recommendation. But uh, Harvester is there, and you can give it a try and see if that, this fits your use case. Okay. What base operating system do the hosts need to run in order to run Harvester? Yeah. In fact, this is the very interesting question. Let me quickly give you a look and how does this look like in to install Harvester. So as I mentioned before, and Harvester can be installed as a ISO. Right. So basically, in fact, the default way we're shipping Harvester, we're shipping a packaged ISO which you are going to load it in your biomental node. And then this ISO, this system can form a whole system to like the harvest cluster. So what I'm showing you right now is we have an internal, uh, we have a lab inside the rancher labs and we have a few uh, biomental machine there. So here is what happens. So you load the ISO into that biomental machine and you boot into that ISO, which is going to be seen, you see something like this. And Rob, you have the Harvest Installer and this is going to be uh, running a few seconds. And, and then you can select to either create a new Harvest cluster or you can like join existing Harvest cluster. So, and uh, that's that's the one way of installing Harvester. And another way, if you just want to give Harvester a try, our recommendation is you can go with some uh, cloud provider, which is who supports the nested virtualization, which is something, uh, I think DigitOcean do it and do it pretty well. And I'm going to demo that right now. In fact, I can do that right now. So if you just go to this very familiar rancher page, 
And I have a new DigitalOcean class just set up and called Harvest Demo. And I'm going to have the harvester deploy into this uh, cluster. So, but it doesn't just just word of warning. It doesn't work in every Kubernetes like cloud providers because we need to have like virtualization support underneath. So it will definitely work with the most probably ninety five percent of the bare metal node. But for the cloud providers, as uh, we know right now, only like GCE supported with some very special configuration, and DigitOcean support is out of box. So this cluster is created. The Harvest Demo cluster is created out of DigitOcean. So here we just go launch and launch the harvester. So this is going to install harvester on your existing Kubernetes, but uh, currently, frankly speaking, I don't recommend to using like run this as existing Kubernetes cluster on this yet because this is uh, still like in the very early stage. We might have some issues with like uninstaller or stuff, right? So. If you want to give it a try, I would definitely recommend have a new cluster and just give it a try and play around with it. And if you have any issues with stuff, just let us know. Right, so now the Harvest components are deploying on the Kubernetes as well. And other side, yes, our VM, our badminton machine finally start booting. Yeah, so this badminton machine is pretty gigantic. It's like have a 48 cores and like uh, how many RAMs, 128, something around that. So this is very big, powerful bare machines, which is supposed to be run lots of VMs on top of that. So for this machine, we are going to make it join the existing harvester, which I just demoed before. I'm going to join the existing harvester and I'll choose one of the disk to be our root. And the worst to manage my IP. Yeah, I have to get this right. This must, okay, 192. Okay, let me double check this. Is this the right one? Sounds like the right one. Okay. And also you need to provide something called the cluster token here, which is set when you when you have preset when you like create a new uh, like harvester cluster. And this is basically a password to that cluster. Without this, you cannot join that cluster. And we set some password which you can use to access the console on the node. And optional, you can put the SS key here and you can choose which NIC, which is going to run. And we're going to use in the 90.43 uh, because this is the NIC we connect to the 10G networking. And the proxy, no proxy, no cloud init, and we will be installing. So this is the installing on the biomental host using the ISO. So let's go back and take a look at our another cluster which we installed on the DigitalOcean. And now the harvest is up and running here. And then this is the, the screen you have seen before. And login to harvester using default username password. No. And we have three nodes here. And now I can do the same thing as I just imported case three OS image and get it running. So remember in the background, we still have those, uh, this the ISO based harvester installing, and this is in fact our recommended way to install harvester. All right, so this one with the like rancher and the Kubernetes deploy harvester is up and let's try case okay, row OS, one CP, one memory, ISO. I can use the ISO template. To get to make it a little bit easier for me to to like load ISO directly into C room, and we keep other options as default and just okay. I had this problem. I don't know why yet, but it seems like at the beginning we do prone to have some network issues, and it will recover. Now, well, this is one other thing we need to troubleshooting after the release. All right, so this case 3 os is up and running right now. The app is up and it's kicking up right now. 
All right, so let's go back and watch this um, ISO uh, installation uh, process. And this will going to take a while. I can take some questions now. Yay, questions. All right, uh, let's see here. Does Harvester support PCI pass-through? It's a question from Bernard. Um, I think so, but uh, we need to double check. And uh, I think PCI pass-through is because Harvester is using uh, Kubert and Kubert is underneath, uh, uh, I, if I remember correctly, support PCI pass-through. Yeah, but we need to okay. double check. Okay. Is there any way now or planned to do uh, Harvester provisioning using something like Ansible or Terraform or anything like that? Um, I think you can definitely do that because Harvest is, itself is just uh, ISOs, right? So in fact, what we are looking at right now is uh, you can have the PXE, we, we are looking forward to building a PXE server or something similar to the to the harvester so you can just use uh, PSE boot to to install harvest environmental mm -hmm. talking about that terraform is mostly using um on based on the virtual machine right can terraform use it on the environmental node yeah i don't i, I don't think i have i don't know will william do you know that i i don't i don't speak terraform william are you still with us We lost William. Okay, no, I I don't I, I don't know. Yeah, so um, it's covers by itself. It's just a components and the installer, and you can definitely orchestrate it if like uh, if your orchestration supports on building on the environmental nodes. Yes, but if you install Harvester okay. as a Helm chart, well, of course Terraform and others will be supported. Um, but you need to make sure that the virtual machines or any machine you provision underneath support hardware virtualization. Got it. Uh, scrolling through the questions here, because there are a lot of them. There are some questions about uh, storage functionalities, advanced functionality like snapshots, compression, deduplication, erasure coding, and FTT. Is any of that, like, where would yeah. that sit? Is that a harvester function, a, a CSI function? Where, yeah, what? so that's a, so it's a snapshot backup. Is the, in fact, the, because the underlying storage is supported by the Longhorn, so snapshot backup is not a problem. Our uh, dedupe and compression is not there uh, as, as Longhorn part, as speak as for Longhorn. Yes, we this, we don't really leaning toward to support that because that, that's a lot of effort on the CPU. And we do support mm -hmm. dedupe and compression on the, in the backup store, like after you make the backup, that's just dedupe and compressed. And uh, regarding erasure coding, no, because uh, Longhorn is doing like a, a replica, like a simple replica replication, it's not erasure coded, which is considerably more complex. Yes. So, but okay. uh, the, the uh, snapshots and the backup, uh, snapshot backup restore will be supported in the next uh, next release. Yeah, that's in, in the roadmap. Here's a question from David, who's asking, with the ISO install, how do you get to the Longhorn dashboard if you wanted to add more disks to the pool? Yeah, so currently we haven't provided a way to do that. We we can, uh, yeah, that's something we are going to add in the later. But in fact, the one thing we probably going to do is not really adding a uh, like access to the Longhorn dashboard. Yeah, they will be there for like debugging pur debugging purpose purpose. But mostly we are going to um, probably add some functionality in the Harvest UI to integrate what functionality you need on the storage side mm -hmm. to make it unified experience. Mohammed answered our Terraform question. He said Terraform uses cloud provider APIs. So thank you, Mohammed. Uh, scrolling through, there's a bunch of questions coming in. So I'm trying to pick the, the highest priority ones right now uh, to get those answered and then we'll go back. Uh, oh, interesting. So Jeff asks a question. Uh, if, if he were to pixie boot something that had questions during the installation process, how would he answer those questions? Would that be in this console here? Um, no, that's uh, basically if we do PX boot and uh, then uh, we need to add something to the KCRS to to accept like a configuration file as well. Yeah, so that's that part okay. hasn't been done yet, but that's in plan. Okay. Totally random question. Enrico wants to know how we chose the name and if it had anything to do with uh, the game from 1996. Um. 
Well, no, unfortunately, no. The name is choosing. In fact, there's a very like vivid discussion about the name. The name was choosing based on what we think. Okay, so what harvest do we harvest VMs and pack them into containers? So that's what the naming like the name come from. Yeah. Okay. So and also we haven't have official logo yet, and uh, yeah, that is also coming uh, coming too. Nikati asks if networking is based on OVS. Um, no, the networking by itself. So one, the two parts. One is of course Kubernetes overlay networking. Another part is we uh, basically wrote a, a CI plugin for the VLAN and running as a daemon. And you can think about the, like some distribute which is switched there, but it, we are not using OVS or anything underneath at least for now. Dun, dun, dun. This is a very long question. I'm trying to read. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Mason says that he's been following the Starling X project, which promises virtual machines on Kubernetes as well. And that the thing he finds appealing about it is the flexibility of deployment options, like installing it on a single node, on a two node cluster, a three node cluster, and separating that out. The idea being that it can be used as at small edge sites and in data centers. And he's wondering if Harvester supports similar deployment scenarios, particularly the one and two node kind of edge scenario. Yes, Harvester supports that. You can, um, as long as, a, a, if you install Harvester, in fact, the, the previous demo I did was two nodes, right? So if you installing Harvester and you can basically install it as a, like, uh, create a new harvester, but that cl harvest cluster, that cluster can only contain one node. Yes, it's not going to be, it's not going to be great and high availability side, but yeah, that works. Okay. There are questions about the virtual machine guest disk formats, which I know you said some about that during the import question, um, but Chris is asking specifically if we support QCOW2? Yes. Great. Okay, so I love those kinds of answers. Okay, so now Harvester with new node is up and running. And let's take a look back. And where's that previous Harvest cluster? Yes, 941. Yeah, now you can see that this Harvester has three nodes, which the last one is what we, oh, in fact, this one, the 43, is the one we just added, right? So now you can still like starting your virtual machines as usual. Or as two, and I just just for the very quick, just start the case OS and I just click create here. Okay, I really need to just check what is this network arrow coming from. Okay, something's up. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, so currently we had a, uh, when we are adding a new node, we are uh, underneath, we are rebalancing the um, the menu across different nodes. So that is um, having internal about, the VM won't be impacted, but uh, for many operations have have about like one minute downtime. So let me try it again. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, step two. Okay, now it's up. Yeah, as you can see that there's still um, many polishing work need to be done. So that's why this is like MVP, the first version. And, but uh, this is the really showcase what our version is and, uh, and basically demonstrate what we can do in this area. All right, so I think I'm uh, down with my demo. And any questions, just um, feel free, all right? Oh, you said feel free. Here comes here comes a storm. Uh, okay, let's see what we've got. I've been flagging some of them. Jeff wants to know if the ISO can boot K3OS into memory only with just disk persistence. Currently, we 
I don't think currently we have that because the, for example, if you take a look at this K3OS setup, and you can say you can see that it's in fact have two volumes, and those both are like um, volumes provided on the long form. We have we don't have like a RAM disk right now. So in order mm -hmm. for the VM to be boot up, we need to put image somewhere, and that cannot be the current is cannot be on the um, the menu, which is our image store. Right, we need to copy somewhere and start and start putting there. But in the future, maybe that might be possible if we just read ISO on the fly and the right things to on the rook. Yes, that's. I think that probably uh, in theory, I think that's possible. But now, the, now they are right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Peter is curious if you're doing image uploading via the kubevert CDI operator. Oh uh, yes, that's that's exactly it. Good job. Nice one. Peter figured it out. Uh, yeah, that. totally. There it is. Cool. Uh, we had a question from Alex who wanted to know if it's possible to run Harvester on one large node or does it need multiple nodes? Oh, yeah, you can run it one large node. It's uh, just make note. Uh, it's, of course, if you have one large node, you lost that node, you lost everything. But yes, that's uh, that's no problem. Have a sort of scales from one to as long as Kubernetes support, I think how many? Five thousand? Yeah, we have, of course we haven't tested that yet, but in theory that's the what the value is. Right. Uh Jing Dong says, thanks, Shang, super cool. So that's not Thank a question, you. just a, a good job. Uh and actually the last question that we have right now, and this is good because we're rolling up on the top of the hour, is uh Peter wants to know if we he says, can we edit the YAML for the machine to set additional values? Um, currently, if you install as the ISO mode, no, you cannot edit the YAML at the moment, but if you install as a Helm chart, as a developer, yes, you can edit some more values there. And in fact, it just reminds me of one last thing I want to show is, uh, which one is this? 43, okay. Yeah, in fact, when you see this Harvester running UI, you also have a choice to, Click F12 and put the password you had before, and then you can run all this command you get familiar with. Okay, so I think I need to run on the, the master node. And that is 41. Yeah, I drag. Oh, that's off. Well, you see the current state is unknown. There's a known bug here. It's up and running correctly, as you can see from the UI. Yes, this is also something which you'll fix. So now you run kube control get node, and now you can see this is just a standard Kubernetes, AP, uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster. And But yeah, so we hide all those details underneath, and you can see kube control guide NS, which is going to the majority of things with is running in the harvester system get pod, and then this is what you see uh, in other setup, and you can see on the uh, on the rancher setup, you see the service down here, and you can get service, right? So this is the internal IP, which is the one we are using to access the harvester UI, right? So this is the if you look at this, you probably get more familiar to understand that what the harvest is doing underneath. And if you want to get out and control D as your normal console, and then you are still seeing this one. Yeah, and the still current state is that's a bug. All right, any other questions? Okay. Yeah, we got two more questions that just rolled in at the last minute, and uh, these will be the last two. Uh, Frank just wants to clarify, does does he import the harvester cluster into Rancher and once he does, can he manage it with Rancher afterwards? Yeah, in fact, that's the one thing we haven't tried yet. In theory, yes, you can import <laughs> it because underneath underlaying is Kubernetes cluster, but is this recommend to operate on the Rancher? Mm, well, I don't think it. I, I I'm not recommending it right now because really, as you can see right now. From the installation on the ISO to all this uh, like full functional dashboard, we indeed really aiming this to be a open source alternative to the, your proprietary SVI solutions. That is the, what we are heading to. 
that is the, the market, in fact, the market we want to disrupt. Yes, but I think, yeah, in the end, you should able to like import it into the Ranger and yeah, just manage it as other Kubernetes as you do because, well, this is Kubernetes underneath. Right, and could just show up as another menu item on the left. Okay, uh, Detlef actually wanted to tell everybody that during the demo, while you were doing your stuff, he went and downloaded Harvester and got it up and running under Proxmox and it just works. And he wanted to say astonishing, well done, congratulations. Thanks. And he wanted to thank you guys for, for an awesome meetup. Thank you. And then the last question, the truly the last question is from Scott. And um, oh, actually, you know what? We answered that. Scott had a question about if Rancher and Harvester would converge into a single dashboard. So that was answered with the other one as well. So yeah, that's it for questions. Do you want to wrap it up? I saw you had some like roadmap slides and stuff. Yes. So let me stop sharing. All right. So. In fact, uh, William, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, so can you show? Yeah, you're muted, Adrian, you're muted. I just was saying William has returned and saying yay. It was totally not relevant to the meetup. Yeah, so William, can you share, your, uh, share the uh, last few pages regarding how is the roadmap and stuff? Oh, I don't sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be a small feat of strength here but I will try my best to get PowerPoint to. I would do it, but I have the old slide deck with the only the partially completed text. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's loading. It, PowerPoint decided to uh, close out on me. But meanwhile, um, thank you for every, everyone, first off, for all of the great feedback. I've been listening to all these questions and just really, um, really amazed uh, at the insight people have already into this technology. I can tell that you really get it. Um, and yeah. uh, Great questions. Yeah, and because I know this, I mean, some of this stuff is like, when I first saw this, I remember I was thinking like, okay, what's going on here now? There's Kubernetes, but there's VMs, but you, how does CNI even work well? It was very confusing at first. So uh, I'm impressed to see how well that's working. Speaking of how well it's working, uh, PowerPoint is literally just giving up on me. And, and it's fr and it's Okay, let me, let, me try. <laughs> let me try if we can pull this off. <laughs> Okay. We did this wonderful, awesome harvester demo, and we can't show you slides. <laughs> Some things are, uh, you know, trivial, but yet hard. It's just it's it's rancher. It's totally fine. Can I? <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a force quit here on PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, save a copy. I can actually. Sh I can download show. It. Download it. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, sorry, I think I got it now. Open. Okay, it's opening. Okay, so let me, let me share my screen. I hope it's the right one. Share oh, PowerPoint's one. deciding to do an update of its software in the middle. That's what happened. Okay. Uh, okay, so I wish we could you... schedule when those things happened. Yeah, we see your screen. But that, that's an this that's an important right thing. Right? Did we, okay. Is yeah, did we right point out Shang? No? Yeah, that looks right. Did Shang, did we point out that we're going to speaking of upgrades? Case in point with this PowerPoint upgrade, we're going to do zero downtime oh, live migration yeah. upgrades. Okay, so I cannot show it. Why? Gosh, please. There it goes. Now we see it. Okay. Okay, finally. Okay, that's uh, take quite a few effort. Yeah, so the latest release, as you can see, in fact, if you look at the release time, yeah, we released 010 this morning, about uh, um, three hours before. And the roadmap, yeah, what happened in X? Uh, what we have is a live upgrade, and that's, a, a, sorry, live migration, and also called VM motion in some cases. And yes, that is on the roadmap. And as I mentioned before, we also want to do the PX, PXE support to make it easier for you to install on the Bambleton node. And VM Backup Restore is also on there. And very importantly, we want to do zero downtime upgrade. Since you, as you can see, that there's a lot of components in the harvester. And we are really trying to, we're really working very hard to try to hide that complexity. Um, 
from end user. So that is why we decide to go with the ISO installation development node because in that case we do have the control of the whole system, and we can uh, we can make the experience better. And uh, but still, there's a lot of things need to be figured out and how to upgrade into individual components and how the, the upgrade will looks like. So that is one part with uh, also our major focus for the next release. And oh yeah, side note: if you install hardware harvest right now, unfortunately, the upgrade is probably not supported at the moment. But still, uh, feel free to give it a try and have any feedback. You can find out. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us on the Slack channel and GitHub and also forum. And you can read um, a more uh, detailed readme documentation on harvestedgei.io, which currently, in fact, just redirect to the Harvest Repo GitHub page. Yeah, so that will be that will be all from my side. Yeah, and we're going to work um, to improve documentation and some of the just description of what Harvester is on our website very quickly here. So, um, yeah, it's uh, coming soon. There'll be a lot more visuals and, and explanation that you can refer to. Um, but really uh, recommend get involved in the Slack channel, in the forum, in some of the community aspects of the project to um, to not only stay in the loop, but we also want to hear your feedback. We really want to have that continual um, feedback loop going. So please join us in those forums if you have interest in this technology. And um, we're really looking forward to seeing where this goes. As you can see, this is alpha technology, but what I get so excited about from my perspective um, as someone who's, you know, I, I spent many of my many of my years running virtualization stacks as an SRE or HCI systems as an SRE. So, uh, you know, I I know what it feels like to have to operate these things. And when I saw how similar, how good this experience already is as an alpha product, as an alpha technology, it's pretty blown away. I mean, if this is if this is only just the initial tip of the iceberg, uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty optimistic about where this will head once we get closer to uh, to a beta and and uh, and eventually a GA release. So um, a lot of a lot of opportunity and a lot of potential for you, the community, to shape the direction we go. Remember, this is at Rancher Labs. We we develop all of our software based on where the community directs it. Um, so this is your opportunity to help shape that. Is there any other questions we should answer um, in the time remaining? I think we're kind of done with all the fun parts right yeah no there's there's no more questions uh i just want to remind people that this was recorded and in a day or so you'll get a link to the video and a link to where you could download the slides otherwise yeah, I could just slide. one one audience just raised a very interesting question this slide somehow has a confidential down these yeah <laughs> no it's not confidential it's just a probably wrong ppt template we just copied it from yeah we copied it from a from a different template yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's it for questions then. If uh, if you guys don't have anything else, I think we can wrap it up. All okay. right. Yeah. Good. Well, thank thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, Shang. Thank you, William. That was an amazing demo of amazing technology. Uh, thank you to the eighty people who stayed and the other ten or so who had to drop off. You know, well, that's cool too. Um, we're here every month. Rancher Meetup, new technology, amazing stuff. We hope to see you in a future one. Thanks, everybody. All right. See thank you, everyone. See you.